Dante is a no hold barred, uh, unrelenting, never say die, just not gonna give in. If anything sort of confronts him, he's he's ready to go up against it. Kind of a brutal bastard. Dante's not a good guy. He's like, oh, the guy who kicks down the doors of hell, quite literally. Kind of a basically. The thing about hell is it's hard to find someone who could stand up to all that. And that's really what the impetus to make our character as badass as he became. The poet, as he goes through hell, he's fainting, and Virgil picks him up and carries him over spots. And that's not a character that we could use for a hero. Real Dante was in Florence during the Civil War. He was more of a politician. We wanted something a little bit more, and uh, so we made the bold choice to give him a, a pass as a crusader. <laughs> He's had a pretty tragic and, you know, screwed up past. A lot of things in his past that haunt him. You know, he's definitely not some, like, straight sort of action hero. You know, I like the fact that he's a little bit more human. I mean, obviously, he's wielding this giant scythe that most of us couldn't lift. Um, and I know because we built one for Comic-Con. So he's definitely, you know, superhuman in that sense. But there, there are certainly moments in the game where he's not sure if he can go on. I think the story kind of demanded that he be a little bit more complex. The first line of the poem is, you know, at the midpoint on the journey of life, I found myself in a dark forest, and it's a metaphor for him being confused and troubled about his own life, but we wanted to go to the nth degree for the video game. And so we, we wanted him to basically have committed all these horrible sins. Dante is guilty of all nine sins and then some. Definitely start to see how his family factors into it, and you might start to see some familiar faces as you're going through hell and how that sort of messes with him. He's done a lot of bad things in his life. I think one of the important things is as you play through the game, you realize that Dante also tries to redeem himself. The tapestry on Dante's chest is basically this enormous symbol of guilt for him, summing up all the terrible deeds that he's done, or all the terrible moments and memories of his life. The tapestry represents Dante's realization that he needs to suffer for his sins, the same way that people have suffered by his hands. Remembering things, he's remembering horrible things, so we wanted him to be like nightmares, you know, and we knew that we wanted like a really cool mechanism for showing those kind of flashbacks in the game. He's literally wearing the sins of his past sewn into his chest, and he's the one who's sewn them in there. We unfold his past transgressions through a series of flashbacks. Start to discover like how much of a bastard Dante really was. Greed specifically is a turning point where you've discovered a lot more about Dante than maybe you even want to know about. Greed's a little more of a of a cerebral level. It's about puzzles. It's this very mechanized place with gears and you know, motors, as opposed to most of hell, which is very organic. It's in a lot of ways the most hellish level. People are being tortured there in ways that you, know, you haven't seen yet. It's almost a big stone factory of torture. One of the big set pieces of Greed is the Wheel of Fortune. Everything in Greed is kind of controlled by this. Of course, the Wheel of Possibilities. The Order Waster are actually two characters in the poem. Uh, we've combined them into one. Technically, are two people, but they've been sewn together. One wants to hoard, collect wealth. The other wants to constantly expend wealth. And they're stuck together for an eternity to sort it out amongst themselves. Greed is all about torture. And, and teasing people with the lure of gold and ripping them apart as they reach for this. Totally different sort of environment. You got molten gold sort of gripping on the sides. It's a complex level, but it's, it's pretty fun to go through. It reads an interesting level because um, it's really kind of the beginning of Act 2 in a lot of ways. You're going to leave greed behind, descend down into the fifth circle, and, uh, which is anger, and that's where the, the putrid swamp of the river Styx begins.